you guys doing uh we are back in about nine minutes or so the final fight week press conference for Shakur stevenson excuse me oscar valdez wbc 130 pound champion taking on Shakur stevenson in a unification of the wbc and wbo 130 pound championships also the ring magazine is going to be on the line other champions in the division are around um, roger gutierrez who's likely going to have to fight um Hector Garcia over on PBC to unify those WBA belts to be one champion for the WBA. And you have uh, Kenichi Ogawa, who's going to be taking on Joe Cordina. Um, that fight is rumored to take place in June for the IBF. The likely unification after this fight, if there's no rematch, um, would be a fight between um, the winner of this and Kenichi Ogawa for the IBF. So as far as politically, the IBF title can be the next belt that can be unified. And if Roger Gutierrez were to defeat Hector Garcia or be made champion, Gutierrez is a golden boy fighter. Remember Hector Garcia got the upset win over Chris Colbert a couple of months ago. And basically Gutierrez um, is a fight that can happen. Uh, the undercard is really not too much. It ain't really too much there. What's going on, Dream Chaser? Bobby, Brian, Mega Man, Richard. Uh, let me pull up the card here. I thought I already had it pulled up. Gosh darn it. I had to go uh, grab some lunch. Well, I'll use uh, Dan Rayfield's um, page. The fight's taking place over in the MGM Grand in uh, Vegas. Uh, Keyshawn Davis versus Esteban Sanchez, Nico Ali Walsh, Alejandro Ribeiro, Raymond Moratala versus Jeremy Hill. And basically, it's a showcase card. The real money is at the top, you know, of the event. The main event is going to be starting between, I'm guessing, 1130 uh, and uh, midnight. This card and this fight does not interfere with Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano, which is going to be starting at 730 p.m. Eastern. Their ring walk, from my understanding, is about 10 p.m. or 1015 this card here, Valdez um, Stevenson, doesn't start until 10 p.m. So the main event's not going to be until later. So basically, you can watch, um, you can watch both cards uninterrupted. So once again, the final press conference is going to be starting soon, and uh, both of the fighters, including the undercard fighters, are going to be on the stage. And I am tired. I've been doing a lot of running around this week, but however, I am looking forward to um, boxing this week also here's all the content top rank has been putting out on their youtube page i get i did get a chance to watch both episodes of uh blood sweat and tears it's their um premier lead shoulder content built like built up into the fight basically similar to all access hbo 24 7 blood sweat and tears is top rank on espn's you know show here let's go watch a little bit of it just to give you a feel of how it works on what they talk about. And tell me if you agree with Oscar Valdez right here. Not a little. This is from um, episode two of Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Here, I'll put the uh, link in the chat for you if anyone wants to check it out. I thought it was better than um, Spence Uga's All, Ep All Access Epilogue, which aired last week. So I rate this episode, episode two. Um, I'm going to rate it a B plus. Like he is. This is all overconfidence. I think that's one of the keys right there, the body shots. He's not used to people trying to go to, to a body. And that can make him maybe even make a mistake. But also what I've seen in his last fight, sometimes he gets a little too comfortable. He thinks he's dominated his rival. All I need is that one mistake for him to make. And a big punch can land. Can change the fight. And then once he feels that shot, you know, he's not gonna wanna stay in there. When those times where you're tired, exhausted, how much do you want it? Do you got the guts to go through it? That's the question. Now, let's be honest. Who is the more skilled fighter? Like, who's the more skilled fighter? I'm talking about all around, better all around, you know, technically sound, fundamentally sound, you know, uh, punch variety, punch output, athleticism. I think that the majority would say Shakur Stevenson, right? You can possibly say, okay, Oscar Valdez is the bigger puncher. You can't say that. I think that's, you know, I, I think you wouldn't get any flack for saying that. 
So how does Valdez win? For one, he's got to be able to cut off the ring if Shakur Stevenson decides to stick and move and move around. Number two is he's got to hit Shakur with some shit to make him realize like, oh shit, you know, I'm in a real fight. Now, when we look at the resumes, let me pull them up here. Who is, you know, the biggest puncher on Shakur Stevenson's resume? By the way, that uh, Jeremiah Nakathila fight uh, win has aged very well. We saw what he was able to do. The Jamel Herring fight, that was pretty much a, a coming out party right here. This win aged pretty well after what he did to Burchelt. Shakur Stevenson. Uh, 17 and 0 with 9 KOs. By the way, the final press conference is going to be starting in a few minutes. So we're going to head over there live. Uh, 17 and 0 with 9 KOs, 24 years old. Most notable wins, Jamel Herring. Uh, the Nakathila fight, that has aged well before when he fought in people. It's like, who is this guy? Including myself. But now you can count that as a quality win. So he's got Jamel Herring, Nakathila, Joette Gonzalez. He was undefeated at the time. And Christopher Diaz was still somewhat of a solid name. So he's got four good, solid names. The biggest win overall being Jamel Herring. Oscar Valdez is the next step up. Oscar Valdez has been, you know, in, in some wars. What's going on here? There we go. Over there. 30 and 0 with 23 KOs, multiple division champion, just like us, Shakira Stevenson. Both at 126 and 130 pounds. Notable fights that you can really, you know, count as some credible fights. Chris Avalos, Gradiovich, Miguel Mariaca. Shakur Stevenson was supposed to fight him um, in March of 2020. Cervania was a, you know, he took his O. Scott Quigg finished that fight. You know, big balls on him. One with a jo uh, broken jaw. Adam Lopez, that win is eight somewhat well. You know, and then, of course, the big one, Miguel uh, Burchell. But a lot of people thought that he lost the uh, Robson Contacal fight. I mean, he did have a whole bunch of uh, controversy going into the fight. You know, his head may not have been in the game, but nonetheless, still, a lot of people thought he lost that fight. You know, to an Olympian, gold medalist, right? And that was a fight that, on paper, a lot of people were like, yo, before when it was first announced, you had, like, people that were, including myself to an extent, was like, who is Robson Contacal? Why is he fighting him? He wants a safe fight. But then you also had the other side, like, yo, Contacal ain't no joke. Like, dude can really, really box. Let me pull up the um, press conference. But Shakur Stevenson is the favorite. But you know what I was saying? Um, I think it was yesterday. I was thinking to myself, like, yo, what's going to happen if Shakur Stevenson eats a big shot and gets on his bike? You know how social media is going to be. You know, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Shakur Stevenson was on his bike. He got cracked. His chin is suspect. He just was, he was running. They're already talking the bike stuff now. You know how he's got a shiny new bike. But this is what I want to see from Shakur Stevenson. We want to see him get cracked, take a big punch. We haven't seen it yet. I want to see him get hit with some shit. You know, and we're, we're seeing him fight. Uh, we're seeing him fight an, another young, hungry, prime fighter. Like, you know, we wouldn't see this fight if it was on, you know, PBC or, you know, possibly. And no, probably, you know, PBC, it would have pay-per-viewed this joint. This would have been pay-per-view. You know, so we're getting this on primetime ESPN, which is why we're seeing the undercard filled with prospects. But this is a big time fight right here. Both fighters undefeated. The classic uh, Mexican versus African American rivalry. The African American boxer being the the slick mover, you know, pure boxer. The Mexican power puncher. You know, it's it's it, it's set up to be a classic. Now, as I was talking about earlier, it's likely that uh we can see the winner take on Kenichi Ogawa, who's the uh, WBO champion. Let me pull up my rankings here from 53360.com. Excuse me, the IBF champion is Ogawa. Valdez is the WBC, and um, Shakur Stevenson is the WBO. Roger Gutierrez is the only champion right now for the WBA. Has he been elevated yet? Here, let me, I'm pulling up the rankings right now. Top rank is about to come on, like, real quick with their music. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, uh, so here is the 130 pound division remember chris colbert had lost to hector garcia so therefore you would think that roger Gar roger gutierrez and hector garcia should have to fight to be the only champion wba super 
right? And Ogawa is set to take on Joe Cordina um, sometime in June or so. Archie Sharp over at Pro Bellum is talking shit. Got a press release from him. He's the WBO mandatory. So basically, the winner of Stevenson Valdez, Valdez Stevenson, has to fight Archie Sharp. Unless they unify. And I think they need to wait to see what Ogawa's going to do and Joe Cordina unify with that belt. Because frankly, don't nobody want to see no Archie Sharp. No disrespect to Archie Sharp, but nobody want to see him. James Valdez. Valdez has been in unnecessary wars because of his fight style. That's the concept. True. True. Are y'all related, Valdez? You related, Oscar, that you? So, yeah, you know, I'm going to be here on uh, Saturday. I'm going to be covering a lot of fights. Um, you know, at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, you're going to have Katie Taylor versus Serrano card over on the zone. And then this card starts on um, ESPN Plus. I mean, on regular ESPN at 10 p.m. The undercard is going to be on ESPN Plus with the prelims. And, of course, you're going to have the, in the uh, NFL draft. So don't be surprised if this event is going to be jumping around channels and shit. But yeah, um, a lot of boxing news. And can you believe that already next week is Canelo versus Bevo fight week? That's next week. That is next week, $79.99 on pay-per-view. If you have the zone, you got to pay the $20 subscription per month along with $59.99. Ain't that some bullshit? What happened to, you know, uh, uh, you know pay-per-view is dead. I'm kind of upset about that. And we just had... Um, uh, Fury White last week here on pay-per-view and then the week before we had um, Spence versus Ugas and then I paid for UFC a couple of weeks ago you know I am like I'm out of it guys you know like I'm you know like it's like I'm pay-per-viewed out then Floyd got some NFT shit going on I took a look at that and did a video late last night you know about 1-2 o'clock in the morning and I'm like what are they doing to us man these people are nuts they're crazy as shit. What up, Dream Chaser? Hey, not to switch topics, have you heard of the new racist allegations against ESP and former female anchor is suing them? You talking about Sage Steele? Don't get me started on her, bro. Don't get me started on her. You can't cry racism. How she cry racism? Isn't her husband like, you know, of European descent? You know? This fight, ain't, you you can't compare this fight. I hope you're not comparing this fight to uh, Gotti Floyd, ver, Floyd versus Gotti. Gotti was had been beat to death damn near six times by the time he, you know, Floyd got to me. You know, and I don't like the Shakur Stevenson Mayweather. Um, uh, and well, well, here we are. Let's watch the press conference. We'll talk after. There's Mark Chinook. He kind of grew on me, man. I couldn't stand him at first. And this is. Top rank on ESPN. Directly to my right. Tom Cruise only in theaters May 27th. It's not every day you get to mention Tom Cruise. Bob, where is he? Couldn't he be here with us today? No. <laughs> I didn't call her no bad winch. Don't put those words in my mouth. You're not getting me canceled. <laughs> So we're going to ask you now, gentlemen, to leave those microphones on your chairs, and we're going to give you the first face-off of the week. We've been waiting for this one a long time, ladies and gentlemen. It is the WBC, the WBO. Radio you know, Magazine, you guys be good, upstanding people Saturday, out in the real world. Electricians, accountants, Vegas, certified nursing assistants and shit. And y'all get online and just, just descend into animals. You just turn into animals. You need to get it together. This is not high school. This is boxing. I'm not your babysitter. We will see you tomorrow for the weigh-ins. By the way, we will be here tomorrow for the weigh-ins. We'll be here live. We'll also obviously be covering the fight on fight night. What fight feels like it has the bigger feel? Is it this or is it Taylor Serrano? Taylor Serrano seems like it has like a bigger feel. Yeah, a bunch of fucking sex deviants and, and porn. Oh, he pushed him. He pushed him. Y'all saw that? And Valdez ain't do shit. I'm going full LDBC. I'm making shit up now. 
Shakur Stevenson, breaking news. Shakur Stevenson, five foot seven, undefeated, WBO champion from New Jersey, pushed Oscar Valdez. Val Valdez didn't do nothing. He pushed him. I'm making shit up. He pushed Valdez. Look, let's go run it back. He pushed him, and Valdez ain't do nothing. I'm starting this bullshit beef. So look, he said, he said I'm gonna fuck you up. And he gonna grab his, try to grab for his belt. And it's gonna be a little bit of fisticuffs. All hell's about to break loose. He pushed him, shut up, he pushed him. Oh look, oh, he tried to take his belt. Oh, that's it. Oh, oh, he, oh shit. With security, separate these guys now. We need them to settle it in the ring. Settle it in the ring, fellas. We gotta make it to, to, to fight night. We gotta make it to fight night. All right, so here we are. Here's the card, Oscar Valdez versus Shakur Stevenson. Remember, the card starts at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Uh, it's going to start at 6.30 p.m. on ESPN Plus if you want to watch the prelims. Uh, Keyshawn Davis versus Esteban Sanchez. That's going to be the chief support. The event is likely going to open up with Nico Ali Walsh versus Alejandro Abara. Um, when Nico Ali Walsh is fighting, that's going to be the end of Taylor versus Serrano. So basically, Taylor versus Serrano on the zone is going to be starting at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. That's when that card is going to start. And then... At 10 p.m. Eastern, is supposed to be the ring walk for Taylor versus Serrano. Let's say the 10 p.m. or 10:15, and then this card starts. So you're able to watch all the way through. You see what I'm saying? But listen, something in my gut has been telling me, bro, that you know Valdez is going to hit Shakura. Shakura with some shit, man. You know, and that's what I really want to see, Shakur. I, I want to see him in a tough fight. I want to see him at this stage in his career. I want to see the dog in him. You see what I'm saying? I want to see him have to dig deep. That's what I want to see. Now, of course, there's a price with that because what's going to happen? If Shakur Stevenson ends up getting a unanimous decision or split decision or he gets touched up, people are going to discredit Valdez and the talent that he has. But look at Shakur Stevenson and say, oh, well, you know, um, uh, he's been exposed or he talk all that shit. He ain't really, you know, this or that, you know, and that's how it goes. But at the end of the day, I'm just hoping that, you know, it's not a snoozer. And I hope that Valdez really comes to fight, you know, now it's a high probability that Shakur Stevenson is going to box and try to play keep away and really don't really want to try to bang, you know, and especially if he gets cracked. But yes, you know, Nigel, I do feel that he may get like, you know, like Valdez may be going to school. But something in my gut, man, telling me he going to get he going to get chin checked, man. Something in my gut's telling me that. So in a perfect world, we would have the winner go on to fight the winner of Kenichi Ogawa versus Joe Cordina for the IBF. Ogawa and Ordina, I mean, Cordina are supposed to be fighting sometime um, this summer of uh, rumors are in June. Roger Gutierrez is the only WBA champion. He was supposed to be fighting Chris Colbert, but then Hector Garcia was a late step in. So will we see Roger Gutierrez versus Hector Garcia for the uh, vacant WBC title, the actual super title? Or will Gutierrez be elevated? I don't know what's going on with that situation. But, you know, the 130-pound division is a division, is a division that can have an undisputed champion by the end of this year. No, not the end of this year. Let's say sometime by this time next year. So, for example, in a perfect world, let's say the winner of Shakura Valdez goes on the fight, Kenichi Ogawa. <laughs> that would happen, you would say, you would guess sometime September, October, November. And then the winner of that go on the fight, Roger Gutierrez, whoever has that WBO BA title sometime around the spring or so around this time next year. Yes, I understand Valdez. I'm looking at it. I see Valdez is WBC champion. Gosh darn it. Just follow me. You know what I'm talking about. We're not children. All right? Yes, I made a little mistake, but I got the shit on screen. So you know what I'm, you know, just, just follow me here. All right? 
Um, but if Shakur Stevenson wins, well, either way, the winner of Valdez Stevenson, if they don't unify, then they're going to have to fight Archie Sharp. Pro Bellum fighter. He's got people releasing press releases for him talking shit. No bullshit. You know, so I don't want to see a Shakur Stevenson or Valdez versus an Archie Sharp. And also, is there a rematch clause? You know, that's something that, you know, we haven't gotten any answers to. But before I go, in your opinion, what feels like the bigger fight of the weekend? It seems like Taylor versus Serrano. I mean, after all, this is the biggest fight, you know, they're saying in women's boxing history, undisputed, and what's going to be a sold-out Madison Square Garden, but it is on the zone, a streaming app. But it does feel like, overall, a bigger fight. Taylor versus Serrano feels like a bigger fight. I don't know. That's just me, man. That's just me. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to be here tomorrow for the weigh-in. Let me look up and see what time the weigh-in comes on. What time is the weigh-in tomorrow? Oscar Valdez made in Mexico. What is this? They don't have the uh, weigh-in listed on here. We got a post fight show here. Let me check um top rank YouTube page. See where the weigh in is. When the weigh in is. Interesting. I would guess it would be. I could just look it up in my email. Hold on and pull up the uh, fight week schedule. You're saying the women's boxing event is bigger? Taylor Serrano just feels bigger, right? I'm just pissed off that it's not a. Uh, three minute rounds because Katie Taylor didn't want it to be three minute rounds because she wants more pay, but she's getting like, from my understanding, this is the biggest, uh, purses according to Amanda Serrano in women's boxing history. So I, I don't get that part. Me. I think that she just didn't want uh three minute rounds because of, uh, endurance and stamina issues. Katie Taylor has, has, a his, has had a history of slowing down in fights later on. That's what I think it is. I think her team advised her. Like, listen, don't do three-minute rounds. You ain't been boxing three-minute rounds, you know. But for a fight, they're supposed to be saying, why is this email not opening? I'm trying to find you the time for the weigh-in. But if they're saying this is supposed to be the biggest fight in female boxing history and they want equal pay, it's like I'm not trying to hear no equal pay shit if you're not even trying to motherfucking fight three-minute rounds and y'all turning it down. Like, that don't make no sense to me. You know, it don't make no sense to me. You know, because of Michaela Mayer, love her to death, cover all her fights, but she said something along the lines too. And it's like, wait a minute, like, and them two minute rounds fly by fast. And I cover enough women's boxing to see that when they do those two minute rounds, you'll see a female fighter get hurt or start slowing down where it's like, oh shit, a knockout may be coming. And then the round ends. Like, that's some bullshit, you know? But hey, listen, whatever they want to do, that's up to them. You know, but I do feel that 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 those three minute rounds hold them back. Let me see. Where's this schedule? Here it is. Fight week. All right. Okay. So tomorrow, the weigh in is now. It says 440 p.m. Eastern. So in 24 hours, the weigh in for Valdez Stevenson is going to be starting. It's going to be on a top ranked YouTube page and Twitter. And then it's going to be a special episode of Max on Boxing at 5 p.m. Following the weigh in with the main, you know, interviews and things like that. Okay. All right. We'll be here for this. Will I be streaming though? Because I do want to watch Max on Boxing. We can't stream during that. I'll figure it out. And the um, broadcast starts at 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Plus. Undercard starts at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. The main event, Ring Walk, is going to be about 11.45 or so, maybe a little bit early. But by that time, um, Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano, is going to be over. So once again, there's going to be a small overlap between the beginning of this broadcast at 10 p.m. and the main event of uh, Taylor versus Serrano. Meaning by the time Nico Ali, Nico Ali Walsh's fight is over, and I believe he's opening up the ESPN broadcast, by the time his fight is over... Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano is going to be over. So we'll be able to watch Keyshawn Davis fight if you're interested. Pretty much um, 
uninterrupted along with Valdez versus Stevenson. Yeah, she was saying that the fight couldn't be sanctioned. No, she said it, it may not have been sanctioned by the WBC if it was three minute rounds. But I think if I think if they petitioned the WBC, you know, put it this way, I just think it's bullshit. You know, if they wanted it to be three minute rounds, it could have been three minute rounds. The WBC, I don't think they would have disagreed. By the way, take your time out, like the video, subscribe. Uh, where is my WBC app logo? Why is it right there? Here we go. What are you doing down there? Down below in the description box is a link to the WBC app, powered by the Vi Vive Network. Roku, Android, Apple. Also, links to my social media and Twitter and Instagram are right down below in my uh, link tree as well. But I'm going to get up out of here. I've been streaming for a few hours covering boxing. So I'm going to go um, start dinner prepping. And um, I'm going to do a couple of videos later on. And I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe and teach me controversy with 5 360